very carefully guys don't puncture your radiator and there we have it guys there it is on an 8th generation Civic SI is to take this cover off right here. You're going to probably have a plastic holder on that, on that, and then you're going to have one right here as well as one right there. Just take a flat head, pry upward on it. So we should just be able to take this off right now. Just work with it. Lift up over your hood latch. Because once you have your bumper and that cover off you're going to disconnect your battery you're going to start with the negative terminal first and then you're going to disconnect the positive terminal so guys we're going to go ahead and disconnect our battery remember it's a 10 millimeter for the sizes for the terminals So to get the serpentine belt off, all you're going to need is a 14 millimeter wrench. You're going to stick that on your tensioner pulley, which is the pulley right underneath the idler pulley, right there. Your breaker bar, you're going to slide it right in the slot of the crescent wrench and pull back towards you. And that's going to relieve the tension on the serpentine belt. So you can just slide it right off all right guys as you can see we have the serpentine belt off and it's kind of difficult to get it off as well as it to get on i would suggest that you take everything apart from the top and then work your way down to the bottom and as you guys can see right here i have like slots and stuff so i was able to get my hand in there and mess with it to take it out from the bottom so remember to have your radio code it's going to be in your glove box if you pull your glove box down it should be on the left side you'll see like the numbers so next thing we're going to do after the serpentine belt is off we're going to we have to get rid of this whole cover right here in the front so to get this cover off you're going to have all 10 millimeter bolts on each side you're going to have one two three on the front side you're gonna have one on the top, one 10 millimeter, and then there's one on the back. All right, guys, we are just finishing up this side. You do not have to remove this bolt, guys. That's just the bracket that stays on for the uh, radiator. So once you have those out, guys, you can see the bracket is coming loose. So just working on these two bolts, these two 10 millimeters right where the radiator cap is. All we have to do now is get, we have one 10 millimeter on the back on this side. We have this top 10, which I'm already doing. And then we're gonna do this one, 10 millimeter, and then that one. And then this whole bracket should pop off. So the only thing that's holding me back is the radiator fan harness. I need to go ahead and disconnect that. As you can see, the line runs all the way underneath until about here. So I gotta go ahead and get this whole line uh, separated because it's holding it on on this side, so. All right guys, I got this one out right here. As you can see, let's go ahead and take off this bracket now. We're just gonna tuck this off, move it up to the side. Go ahead and get the alternator off. Break that free. So there we go guys, should look just like that. Little washer. Next guys, we have to get this plastic tab off. So I'm just gonna take some needle nose pliers press together on the back and then it should slide right through wire is completely disassembled right here so that can hang off to the side i'm going to go ahead and work on the three bolts to take the alternator off we have one on the top which is a 12 millimeter and then if you could see right behind your ac line right down there there's another two on each side and those are both 12 millimeters All right, guys, the top bolt is out. It's gonna look just like that. Let's go ahead and get the bottom ones out.
For the one on the right, this one I had to use a 12 mil wrench just because I couldn't get past this hose right here. So keep that in mind. So I'm just working on unloosing these now. Then the alternator should come out. As far as getting the alternator out, I'm gonna have to take one of these fan shrouds off, which is gonna be this one right here. There we go, guys. We got the two. We got the two 10 millimeter bolts off for the fan shroud, and we're gonna go ahead and take the fan shroud off. I'm gonna do a little unboxing for you guys just so you can see what this thing looks like if you haven't seen one before. So let's get it done. Bunch of papers right here. This is the expansion valve, guys. The receiver dryer. So we got a bunch of O-rings right here. Pad oil right here. Super cool. Here is the final product, guys. We got the AC compressor right here. As you can see, guys, it went the budget way. If you're doing this yourselves, remember to have all your refrigerant drained out of the system ahead of time so you don't go taking apart any of the uh the hoses and then having the refrigerant blow up in your face so make sure your whole system is evacuated of your refrigerant in there so as you guys can see my condenser looks a little shot right now so that's the oem one and i'm gonna go ahead and order a new one of these next week also the directions state that it's pretty important to change out your expansion valve as well as your receiver dryer so i'm gonna probably end up changing these as well just to be on the safe side we have the alternator out guys we're gonna go ahead and remove our ac lines from the actual compressor itself so we're gonna start on the uh on this hose right here and you can see right there that should be a 10 millimeter bolt so i'm gonna go ahead and remove this next even though the whole system is removed of refrigerant it's really important to wear safety glasses just in case. All right, so the AC line is loose. Head and remove this one, guys. Right over to the right here. It's gonna be another 10 millimeter bolt right there. I'm working on getting this last bolt off for the hose. Come underneath and do this, guys. This is a 10 millimeter. It's way easier if you get up under the car and do this because you can end up stripping it out if you try it from the top because you won't get the leverage. And there it is, guys, right there. This hose should be able to... There we go. Came right off, guys. Both of the hoses are out, you can see. I'm going to go ahead and remove. I have one, two, and then there's two on the bottom. They're 12 millimeter bolts. Then I should be able to get the compressor out, up through the top. And... There it is. Tuck this hose off to the side for the other one. Crawl underneath the car and get the two bottom 12 millimeters out. All right, so coming under the car, guys, here's your subframe right here. The compressor is right here. One of the bolts we want to get out is right there. And then the other one is going to be right there. All right, guys, the first bottom one is out. Here we go guys, the second one is out. All the bolts are out and everything is disconnected from the compressor, it should slide right out. Carefully guys, don't puncture your radiator. And there we have it guys. There it is. The only reason why I took it out of the top is because I wanted to get my alternator tested and everything like that because if you guys have been seeing my videos, uh, this whole car has been giving me a problem with a whining noise. So I wanted to take the alternator out and get that tested and then at the same time while I'm already pretty much down there, I could just lift the compressor up through the top. As you guys can see, this AC compressor is not the original Denso one. So this has been replaced before. This is this pretty much the same version that I have now. Um, so that shows that 
the Denzel one that was in this car probably took a dump before so they had this changed out so since this has been replaced before and this is a cheaper compressor this makes me think that the problem is definitely coming from this compressor all right guys so before I go ahead and assemble the new AC compressor so I'm gonna go ahead and take a ride to the parts store now and see if I can get all that stuff like any WD-40 uh, measuring cups I need to test the alternator out and just some other stuff all right, so we're officially back at the workstation here. I picked up some silicone spray, some WD-40, and a couple measuring cups. You know, since this was replaced before, I'm wondering if they didn't add the proper amount of oil into the compressor to maybe cause a failure, but I could be wrong, but that's just weird how there's like no oil in there literally. So I think that has something to do with the problem. So we're gonna go ahead and drain out the new compressor and then we can add the proper amount of PAG oil to the new compressor. All right, so as you guys can see, we have this 10 millimeter bolt on the top of the new AC compressor. I took that off and this whole thing should slide right off. So a little bit more came out so we have about 2.5 ounces of PAG oil that came out of the new compressor. I'm gonna do some research really quick and see what the right amount is so we can go ahead and re-add some new oil to the compressor. I'm trying to call Honda right now for the right PAG oil amount, seeing what they say. Well, all right, the new compressor should come with the oil already in there. It, it does have oil already in there, but yeah. they say you're supposed to drain the new oil out and uh, I, it, it only takes it only takes like about a half ounce it doesn't take much really yeah all right because there's like there's like two and a half ounces in there right now so yeah. so as you guys heard that i just talked to a service guy at honda and he was asking a couple technicians they pretty much said use the amount of pag oil that's in your AC compressor already, which is like 2.7 fluid ounces and just use that amount for the compressor. So honestly, I should have never even drained out the new compressor. I'm gonna add like three ounces to the compressor. Put my cap over this until I'm ready to install it. Next, you're gonna spin the clutch clockwise about eight to 10 rotations. Just gonna work on replacing a few O-rings that I can get off. So there's one of them. I'm gonna replace uh, some new O-rings. I have this hose and then I have the bottom hose. Also make sure you guys lubricate your O-rings with new PAG oil before you put them onto the hose. Also guys, the torque specs for the two 10 millimeter bolts that connect each of the hoses. So you have one right there and then one on the bottom side, that little nut down there. Those are both eight pound feet of torque and the 12 millimeter uh, AC compressor four bolts. Those are 16 pound feet of torque. So as you can see, the new compressor is installed. All I need to do is pretty much get everything reassembled and Hopefully she's good to go. I'll be letting you guys know in the next video if this thing is fixed or not. If this video was helpful, give me a thumbs up. Drop a comment down below if you think it's going to be fixed or not. And we will see all of you in the next video. And remember, never stop wrenching. Peace.